bring myself to orgasm in the middle stall of the last bathroom, the final terminal of the Ronald Reagan National Airport. And before boarding a plane to some place I have never been, I sat across from a soldier with the name Hope stitched into the fabric of his chest. And instead of getting caught up in the potential beauty and irony of this image, I thought, I have never been fucked by a soldier before. <laughs> and, and I have never had an orgasm on an airplane, so why not try to kill two bald eagles with one stone cold boner? Gross. I'm pretty sure you can't say that on an airplane instance. I sometimes call myself a sometimes poet. I figured I could rephrase, so instead I said hella confident to him. I was like, hello, hi, hello. <laughs> to a pair of noise cancellation headphones hiding in the foxholes of his ears. The wires tangled like some purple heart medallion throbbing in the key of sex over his G.I. Jane chest leading to his penis disguised as a landmine during peace times just waiting to burst. And I imagined hope gripping my neck and turning me into no other man's land and I imagined taking hope by the wrist at 7.6 miles above the Atlantic and jumping parachuteless into somewhere undoubtedly safer than he was going, except we weren't flying over the Atlantic. And me, I can barely save myself. And I know that after we come, we just become another bucket of red paint sprayed across the back of a fashion fur, or muddying the sand of some place older than names. Beneath his hardwood frame is a stomach tied into tree knots where he has prayed on his promise rings to bring help instead of hailstorms. No grains shaped like bullets, no water laced with tidal waves these days. Mad ghosts pass soldiers through our airports, the star-strangled banner-clanging tank gang lullabies to buy gone campfires, eyes, the color of Dead Sea. And if I could, I would offer this body as a sanctuary so they could bury the violence they seen inside of me instead of bringing it back to their families. Hope, Hope nods his head in time to some silent symphony, and I pretend it is something I know, perhaps Beethoven. Maybe young Jeezy. And hope is coming home from war. Backpack filled with soiled white flags and the cracked rapture of secrets never meant to leave the inside of bone. And I pretend that this is something that I know like fucking poetry or, or fucking in bathrooms. Pause. Well, I was, no, I was gonna say something gross as a proposal. Not fucking in bathrooms. That kind of ruined the flow of the Re rewind. <laughs> fucking in bathrooms. And hope is going to Phoenix. Me, I'm boarding a plane to some place I have never been. And instead of getting caught up in the potential beauty and irony of this image as Hope turns his back on me to walk away, I think, fuck. Well, at least I can still have an orgasm on an airplane. One bald <laughs> eagle will die, but Hope is going to Phoenix. Cool. So the ending of that was a little lackluster. I actually met a guy at a
Back when I held the world in my sweaty palms like an unwilling orgasm, when we knew that money is a brick wall that can be built around our own inadequacies went from me. Presidents were like latex, useless and easily obtainable. There was enough power in my limp wrist to make the strongest men quake like the coiled snake seizure understand that freedom to be yourself is expensive. Many of us do not come out unscathed. You had potential, kid, but look at you now. Caged by the camera stage lights, blacklisting fingertips, smudging lipstick across your mouth. I never forgot to wash myself clean. Wrestling with your demons in a public arena is trying to not barbed wire around the wind. It is a losing battle. You have not come out unscathed. Things are different these days. You should have learned from the last time. When cowboy became cocaine, and that unnamed teenage boy stared at you from the pages of the Jew run paper, understand, we can no longer bring our kites into lightning storms as umbrellas, understand, when burying your self-hatred inside of strangers, you must bind their mouths and cut their tongues before you come, our type of love is expensive. Lives must be lost in order for us to live, you had potential, kid, but look at you now. I saw things start to change when Roy Cohn caught that faggot disease, and we were forced to watch as a pillar of reason began to crumble the structure of our playground. He fell into that same shame-filled casket you will, Larry, unless you understand that this desire is a giant lying dormant in the mountain of our mouths. And when he rises from out of us, as myth from bullet wound, as newsprint from the typewriters of blackmail journalists, you must let his footprints shake the ground elsewhere. Look how I did, dynamite exploding where you least expect it, a flurry of bullets scorching a frozen Chicago December, an Oakland free breakfast program ruined, caged panthers in Maryland fucking John and Bobby Kennedy at the same drunk time. Dear, dear friend. You can still be a mountain again. Just take it from me. Do like I did. And take that self-hatred that could so easily destroy you and turn it out against the world. Your coffin's waiting for you. Your move, cowboy. Best intentions, J. Edgar. Yes.